Welcome to part two of a Stuart 10V steam engine rebuild. In this episode I will be taking a closer look at the problems, removing the top cylinder cover to expose the piston and unbolting the cylinder from the standard to carefully remove the piston. The upper and lower cylinder covers will also need to be fitted with gaskets. At this stage of the rebuild I'm very concerned about things like sheared bolts and so far the good news is I haven't found any. This is a clip from the previous episode showing the slight amount of wear on the crankshaft at the valve end which is very unusual, normally these wear at the flywheel end. But I think, owing to the tightness of the fit of the eccentric rod into the valve fork, applied some unwanted pressure to the crankshaft. So it's worn more at this end than the other end, but it's within tolerance. I've removed all the bolts that secure the top cylinder cover in place, and now I can lift it off the top. As you can clearly see, it doesn't have a gasket fitted. Gaskets are essential between both the top and bottom cylinder covers and the main cylinder casting. I'll make some gaskets before I refit these parts together. And now I can see the piston. What is wrong with this? It's just a gunmetal piston in a cast iron cylinder. But how do I unscrew the piston from the crosshead should I need to remove it? Normally I would drill two holes down into the piston body to take a pair of circlip pliers to do this. I would drill the piston in situ whilst it's fitted to the engine. But as I have to remove the cylinder to allow access to the lower cylinder cover, I will drill the holes in the piston after I've removed it from the engine. At this stage I thought I would try a test fit of some brand new Stuart studs. These are a little bit longer than the ones that were fitted. I was thinking about turning the steam chest around so that the inlet was on the opposite side to the exhaust, but it was a very tight fit. So I shelved that idea and put it back as I found it. The engineering is not perfect, but then again neither is mine. I try to make parts that will fit any way round, but they don't always do that. With the steam chest cover in place you can see that now the studs are the right length. But unfortunately in this clip I fitted them the wrong way around for this engine. The studs are different at both ends. In this clip if you look closely you will see that the ends of the studs are threaded for a different length at either end. The longer threads are designed to be screwed into the cylinder casting and the shorter threads are the ones that the nuts fit on. I got it wrong when I fitted the last stud so I removed it and refitted it. Time to fit the steam chest in position. Once again I'm demonstrating how the steam chest nearly fits the other way around but not quite. I very slightly enlarged the holes in the steam chest and now it fits either way around. The nuts are a perfect fit on these studs and as I tighten the last one in place it's really starting to look good. The threaded part of each of the studs protrudes through the nut exactly the same amount and this looks much better than the previous incarnation. Oddly enough the previous studs were too short. I don't know how they came to be too short as normally Stuart studs are all the same length for a particular application. But now everything's fine and that part of the engine is looking good. What I need to now do is remove the cylinder entirely from the standard. And this is where I'm really hoping that none of the bolts are sheared. So far so good. And the last one tells me that every one of the bolts are 100% and not stripped at all. And the good news is, in this clip it clearly shows that the steam chest will fit the other way around. Moving on, or should I say downwards, onto the flywheel, I unscrewed the pinch bolt that holds the flywheel to the crankshaft. And with this removed, the flywheel just slid off the crankshaft. This flywheel has been modified at some stage. I think possibly originally it wasn't centralised on the crankshaft. And as you can clearly see in this clip, the flywheel boss has been remachined and a bush has been fitted. The flywheel is a perfect fit on the crankshaft and spins concentrically, which is the main thing. This clip shows the engine once I removed the cylinder. The four bolts that held the cylinder to the standard were quite tricky to remove with a small spanner. In the end, I used a nut spinner. And now it's top tip time. I need to remove the piston without damaging the piston or the piston rod. 
So what I'm doing is using some 600 grade wet to dry sandpaper which actually grips the piston and allows me to manually unscrew it. I'm not using pliers or a wrench of any kind. I unscrewed the gland nut from the lower cylinder cover and this is what I pulled out of the gland, a very small amount of very dry and very old graphited yarn. I will repack the gland using some Teflon coated yarn which is a modern equivalent of graphited yarn. This is interesting. The lower cylinder cover definitely only fits in one position. I rotated it until all the holes lined up, and oddly enough, on attempt number four, all of the holes lined up very well. There's no problem here. I would rather have clearance than things be too tight on these small engines. Here's the engine in modular form. All safe and secure in my polythene box because I don't want to lose any of the parts. In the next episode, I will repair the valve fork on the valve spindle. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.